to number 10 then from paper 2 of the 2021 advanced higher resource paper this is a part a because of some restrictions so you may or may not have done this in this particular year proof by induction for five marks you have to prove that this is true for all positive integers greater than or equal to two so that's effectively natural numbers greater than or equal to two well what you need to be able to do is show it's true to start with. You need to have that at the beginning. If it's not true to start with, then obviously you just forget it then. So you have to show it's true to start with, and then you need to show an inductive process that would generalise that out, which is, if it was true at a particular point, would it follow that the next term would also be true? So you start off by finding that it definitely is true somewhere, preferably at the very start. So you consider that. So you consider n equals 2, because that's the lowest n can be. And see if this works. So take the left-hand side. Well, the left-hand side would be 2 to 2, so it's just going to be a 2 that's going in there. So you've got 1 over 2 times 2 minus 1. That's 1 over 2. On the right-hand side has got 2 minus 1 over 2, which is still 1 over 2. So now you can say, well, the left-hand side is the same as the right-hand side, you know, rather than just saying half equals a half. The left-hand side is the right-hand side, which means it's true. Sometimes you can give it a name, because you tend to just say true for this for, but you could also call that the proposition, and then refer to it by name, the proposition is true. True for n equals 2. You need to have that. It's got to be true to start with. So check it works right at the beginning. Now you consider some random point further on. So now you're going to say, well, let's just assume it's true for some value of n further on for n equals k. If that were the case, what that would mean would be that if you were to go from r equals 2 to k of 1 over r, r minus 1, the answer should be k minus 1 upon k. This is what you're assuming. You're assuming that this is going to work. So this is what's called your inductive hypothesis. So, and this is what you'll be calling in. So we assume that it actually works. We don't know. We'll find out. And then we consider. So we're testing this now. So we're assuming, you know, if this works, then what would happen? If n is k plus 1, just take the next one. If that were the case. So I'm going to consider what happens at the next one. We'll consider that one. So what that means I've got this. I'm considering this k plus 1 of that. Well, that should be, and this has nothing to do with the inductive hypothesis, it's just a simple algebraic fact. The sum of the terms up to k plus 1 must be the sum of the terms up to k. Plus that extra term, plus the term with k plus 1 in it. So plus these replaced by k plus 1. So 1 over... And that would be a k plus 1. And that would be, I'll just put a big bracket here, that would be a k plus 1 minus 1. Now there was a mark for stating the inductive hypothesis, if you like, and starting this off. So I'm going to put that here. So this is like the critical line. The sum up to k plus 1 terms must be the sum of the k terms plus the extra term. That's just the term in its own. And that's what this part in here is. Those generate the individual terms. Now, now you call this in. So you're assuming that this is equal to that. So you're assuming that this is k minus 1 upon k. And onto that, you're going to add, notice that's just a k now, so I'll put that at the front, a k times k plus 1. Calling in by 1, the inductive hypothesis. So that's a mark. Now I've just got to show that that comes to what you want. That the result of this will just be this here. 
So that if it's an n, it's n minus 1 over n. If it's a k, it's k minus 1 over k. And if it's a k plus 1, it should be a k plus 1 minus 1 over k plus 1. Obvious thing to do here is add those fractions together. So you've got a k times a k plus 1. Now, we've got the k already, so this top will have to be k minus 1 times k plus 1. And that's just what I've got. Now, apparently that gets the next mark, but you've still got to finish it off, make the statement, and then make the big statement. So I'm not really that sure about this. Now, this needs tidied up. Well, that's the difference of two squares. So what you've got there is k squared minus 1 plus 1 over k times k plus 1. I'm beginning to run out of space here. This is going to be a wee pest. So you've got k squared, so one of them will knock out one of them, leaving you just a k over a k plus 1. And you may think, it's not worked. But you could just use a little bit of algebraic jiggery-pokery to transform that into what you want. So that definitely comes to this. I just have to save the space, the step there of writing k squared first, and then cancelling out the k's by saying, well, I really wanted a k plus 1 minus 1. Well, you can do that. There's nothing wrong with that. You can add 1 onto that to make it look like a k plus 1, as long as you immediately subtract the 1. So now I've got this. And I'll just put them in brackets to emphasise I've got that pattern with k plus 1s. So it worked. Now, you would have needed a statement there. Equals the required result for n equals k plus 1. I'm going to put it here. So what you've shown is, if, that was the assumption, if it's true for n equals k, then it is true for k plus 1. If it's true for n equals k, that's what you've shown there. I'm going to have to unfortunately come up here. So now, following on from that, since that's the required result, you can make that statement now. This was the little test. So now you can say you've shown this. You've been shown that if it was true, if it's true for n equals k, then, well you can put that means, it's also true for n equals k plus 1. Notice a little sort of subjects missing there. That's why you can sometimes just call that p for the proposition and say, if p is true, then p is true for n equals k plus 1. But, since it's true, or p is true, for n equals 2, then by that inductive process, if it's true for 2, this tells you it's true for 3. And if it's true for 3, this tells you it's true for 4. By that inductive process, it's true for all n greater than or equal to 2. Since it's true for n equals 2, then by induction, or if you wanted to be more formal, by mathematical induction, because induction is just a generalising process, by... I'll put that in. Although it's implied by the question, because it's a maths question. So I'll put that in a bracket. Then by induction, it's true, just use a bit of shorthand here, for all n greater than or equal to 2, and I'll just say also where they are natural numbers. Now, this mark was for finishing this off, showing you got the required result, and making the statement.